Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending June 18th. This one's from CNN, was sent in by Thomas, my friend Thomas, Navy Thomas 8, small asteroid discovered orbiting Earth. A uh, small asteroid has been found circling Earth as the two objects orbit the Sun together. Scientists say it looks like an asteroid called 2016 HO3 has been there for about 50 years. Later, another scientist says he thinks it's been there about 100 years. It's orbiting out at about 9 million miles. Now, just as a comparison, our moon is orbiting at about 240,000 miles out. So this thing is quite a ways out further. And they say this is not unusual. We have captured asteroid companions before. It was done in the past, uh, I think around 2007, and then we lost that one. However, this one seems to be in a pretty stable orbit. Now, I don't know why they don't call it another moon, because the Mars... The two moons of Mars, Deimos and Phobos, they're basically just large asteroids, so why they would not call this uh, another moon of the Earth, I don't know. It's just, I guess, it's their scientific convention or whatever they choose to call it, but it's about, at the most, maybe 300 feet across, so it's not very large either. I mean, it's not, you know, like it's any kind of gigantic size, and it's quite a bit smaller, I believe, than both of the either one of the moons of Mars, so... Um, in fact, they say right here, uh, so does this mean Earth has another moon? NASA says that because the asteroid is so far away, it can't be considered a natural moon or satellite. Instead, they call it a quasi-satellite. Well, they've ar always been arguing that they don't think the two moons of Mars are uh, natural moons either, that they were just captured asteroids. So, And then they talk about the distance. Oh, the other one was in 2003 that uh, another asteroid was captured and probably uh, you know, stayed with us for a little bit. And then uh, finally the orbit had just... Uh, left the orbit. It wasn't a stable orbit, so it left the orbit. So, uh, In 2012, researchers using a supercomputer concluded that at any given time there should be at least one asteroid with a diameter of at least one meter orbiting Earth. Yeah, maybe when you get down to the size of one meter you wouldn't really consider that. I don't know. I don't know what the size difference would be. Is, does it have to be big enough to be round? Phobos and Deimos aren't that way. So, But whatever. I thought that was kind of interesting. And then next, this is from Popular Science Magazine. Cats may understand cause and effect study finds and grasp the laws of physics. Science is getting closer to proving that, yes, your cats probably are probably smarter than you, according to a study from researchers in Japan. Cats seem to understand physics and cause and effects. I'll also put a link to the abstract paper. This is actually a scientific paper on Springer.com. There's an abstract or a summary, and then you can download the entire PDF if you really want to read the whole thing. But what the researchers basically did was they uh, took these boxes and they got the cat's attention, and they would shake the boxes, and they would hear a rattling sound of balls inside the box, and then they would tip it over, and sometimes balls would come out, sometimes they wouldn't. They also did some trials without any balls in the box, just shaking the box with no noise, and then tipping it over too, and by judging how long the cats looked and their attention span for each one of these experiments, they kind of determined whether the cats uh, were interested or something was novel or something like that, so they concluded that since a lot of the cats, or the majority of the cats, when they turned the box over after the rattling noise, nothing fell out because it was designed that way, that the cats seemed to be very curious about what was happening now. Sometimes, as a cat owner myself, I own four cats, and my cat also appears in the TDD report from time to time. As a matter of fact, she's just inches away over there. may still come in, but what it is, is as a cat owner, sometimes cats will actually just sit and stare at a blank spot on the wall for no particular reason, and sometimes they'll even stare for a long time, maybe five minutes or longer. So using that as the only predictor, but hey, you know, it's it's a start, so... Um, if you get a chance, check out these articles. I'd like to thank everybody for sending in stuff for the TDD report. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a break uh, from now till the first week in September, whenever the first uh, uh, Saturday in September occurs. So I'm going to take a, uh, a break basically from now on and through July and through August. Uh, just a summer break. If anything major happens in the science news or anything like that, I may actually... Uh, do some unscheduled TDD reports. I'm also going on vacation to uh, the Buckeye Boys Clubhouse. Uh, we may do some kind of a, a thing for the TDD report as a group thing uh, with uh, some extra people appearing, or we may not. It's just unpredictable. But anyway, it's summertime. I know the viewership's going to go down, and no reason why you shouldn't spend your time instead of just watching videos, spend your time out enjoying the summer. There's going to be plenty of time in fall and winter to uh, watch videos again. So. Anyway, I'd like to thank everybody that participated. It's been 10 years now. Believe it or not, this is the end of my 10th season, and we're going to be starting up the 11th season. It started back in 2007 on another website. It wasn't on uh, YouTube or anything like that. It was on another website that doesn't exist now, but it eventually got to YouTube, and uh, 
I'd like to thank the 50 or so regulars that follow me and up to about 80 to 100 that occasionally drop in on the TDD report. So have a great summer, everybody, and I will catch you uh, maybe with some specials, or if not, I'll catch you in uh, September.